What's good, y'all? It's your boy Defines. Back at y'all with another TDF perspective. It's to die for. All right, look, brothers. Uh, for you brothers that uh, happen to be, you know, the only so-called uh, black man in whatever situation, uh, mainly school. Uh, you need to understand something. You're not there to make friends. You're not there to be buddy buddy with people. You're not there to figure out a magical way to make uh, the kids of the other demographics uh, like and respect you and your culture. Uh, you're there to peep the game and finesse accordingly. You're there to get your knowledge, uh, you know, whatever knowledge you can possibly gain from the teachers. You're there to um, study people, study these de different demographics, study uh, the social dynamics, study them for what they are, okay, objectively, remove the emotionality from it. OK, and then get the fuck on out. So in other words, what you're there to do what Richard Parker did in Life of Pi. You're there to play your role, play the part. OK, not the part of the Uncle Tom. I'm saying just as far as just being cool, you know, don't give no energy to none of the nonsense. Don't waste your time going back and forth with people, cracking race jokes. Don't waste your time trying to make people like you. Just do the work that needs to be done. As soon as the boat hits the shore, hop out the boat, go straight to the jungle. That's what you're supposed to be doing. That's what your mindset needs to be. If it's not that, and you decide you're going to figure out a magical way, a mystical way to get people to like you, get people to respect you, you're going to be one angry ass black man or so-called black man or one angry ass African. OK, so now we're going to uh, we're going to watch this video with this uh, this uh, young this young brother right here. He's a uh, he's a Yale student. And uh, he experienced racism up there. So uh, without further ado, let's peep the game. A second black grad student at Yale University has come forward saying that the white student who called the campus police this week on a black student who fell asleep while studying in a common room of a dorm did it to him back in February. So, so brothers, pay attention, man. This is one white student, okay? One so-called white student doing this shit. One so-called white student has decided that they're going to police the campus, okay? Calling, calling for the police on the other black Yale students. You know damn well he or she has seen these students before, but they decided to do what they did. Why? Because they need to exercise some kind of authority, some kind of power. Think about this. To get to Yale as any student, that is a major, major achievement, major accomplishment. It really is. Because the amount of studying and rigorous coursework that you had to do, the, the, you know, how high you had to have your GPA, the amount of community service that you did, you, this is a goal that you set and you attain that goal. Anybody that makes it to a, a prestigious university, you know, they deserve their respect. But see, this is one thing I noticed personally. I always notice that anytime you're in a situation where you're on par with everybody else and uh, everybody else happens, happens to be so-called white, you know, a lot of them white kids, so-called white kids, they start to do little things to let you know, hey, you know, you're, you're still black. You know, you're, still, you're still under me. And this, this is one of those things. This is, this is an example of those, one of those things. This is a so-called black Yale student. Why are you calling the cops on him? What exactly could he possibly be doing up there? You get what I'm saying? To be a so-called black Yale student, that doesn't even fit the, uh, the stereotype for the, uh, for the young so-called black man in this country or the young African man in this country. But still, there's that need to exercise your superiority over them. Yeah, but let's continue. Renaissance Jean-Louis says he got lost inside the dorm while looking for his friend, Lola de Cianbola, the same grad student who was forced to show her ID to police on Tuesday. And Renaissance Jean-Louis joins me now. Jean-Louis joins me now. Thank you so much. This was um, back in February. You asked her for directions. Good evening, by the way. Good evening. To the common room, right? What happened? Uh, she began to interrogate me on spot. Uh, she asked me, um, if uh, I was a Yale student, I responded, yes, I was, and reaching for my ID, she started screaming and saying, basically, um, if you're lost and you don't know where the common room is, you must be an intruder. You need to get out. You're making me uncomfortable. Um, you need to leave. 
See what happens? It always starts off with the uh, with the so-called white man or the so-called white woman approaching you and doing what? Interrogating you. See, if you truly feel threatened, you truly feel like your life is in danger, your safety is at risk, you would just call the police, right? But that's what they claim. I, I felt I felt uncomfortable. Right? That's what she that's what uh this brother right here said that the lady said, You're making me uncomfortable. What if I'm making you so uncomfortable? Why are you comfortable enough to approach me and waste my time interrogating me? You see the games that are being played here, brothers? You see the games they like to play? And, I, and I'm not saying every so called white person is like this. That's not what I'm saying. But collectively, there's a great uh, a good majority of them are on this type of shit. This is why it's 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 incumbent it's incumbent upon you to peep the game and finesse accordingly, nigga. Steve, uh, confused, I turned my back and went to the base of the staircase, and she was on top of the twelfth floor, screaming at me still. What did so did police? You see that sad face he tried to make right after he said that. See, that's another that's another reason why we, we we're struggling collectively. Uh, the so-called blacks and us Africans we're, we're we're really struggling to get ahead because, uh, you know we wanna we wanna sorry our way into everybody's good graces. At least that's what we're being taught. Tell your story. Tell how tell how you you've dealt with racism. Put a sad look on your face and maybe. Some nice white man, uh, so-called white man, or a nice Mexican, or a nice uh, so-called Asian, or a nice so-called uh, Middle Eastern man will come give you a big old hug and put you on game. It, life does not work that way, okay? It just does not work that way. Come? Did she call police on you? She ended up calling police on me. We found that out when Lolade, uh, a friend of mine, came to the common room, which was on the 12th floor of the Hall of Graduate Studies, um, and when Lottie came back, she came back with police officers who had told her that they were looking for a suspicious character, quote-unquote. Did she tell you why she felt threatened? No. That's crazy, man. Yale is a, is a prestigious, one of the most prestigious universities in the United States. One of the most prestigious universities of the United States. And still, a so-called black man up there will have to deal with the same goofy ass racial element that they've dealt with that people deal with uh, the other so-called blacks deal with from elementary school to middle school to high school so what does that tell you no matter where you go there's no running away from racism okay there's no avoiding it if you are so-called black or if you are african understand that you are viewed as inferior not necessarily because the people that are viewing you as such are, are malicious or evil or whatever but it's because that's what they're taught. You look at the media, you look at how so-called blacks are portrayed. I, as an African, I had to, I've had to, you know, look at the media and look at how Africans are portrayed. All of us are 10 cents a day, starving ass people from a village. That's how, we, that's how we've been portrayed. So I, as an African, have to deal with that. You, as a so-called black man, portrayed as some kind of thug, some kind of degenerate, some kind of savage. You know, somebody that doesn't care, somebody that's lazy. This is this is the image of you that they perpetuate to all the different demographics. So if you're dealing with somebody that, that loves to watch, you know, this right here, CNN or whatever news or whatever outlet that uh, consistently portrays you in a negative light, you have to understand they're going to retain the, the uh, they're going to retain those images of you. OK, the mind, uh, the mind I think I read somewhere, the mind thinks associatively. So they're being taught to associate you with all these negative, all these negative terms, all these negative phrases, all these negative images. You have to understand they're going to interact with you as such. All right. For reason, absolutely. Why do you think she felt threatened? I think race was involved. You're Clearly, black. Uh, there is a uh, policy in which you have to kind of just use your residence key to. Um, Use the elevator within the graduate hall. So, of Nessie, so uh, this is what I want to know. So to get into the hall, do you ha is there, there security or there's a locked door, right? Is it to get? Yeah, the doors are locked. I mean, there's the security door. passes that you got to go through. Okay, and then and then even to get on the elevator, you would have to have a resident key. And this same woman, uh, Sarah Brash, invited me onto the elevator, asked me which floor I was getting off of, and when we got to the 12th floor, she went downstairs. 
But at no point throughout our entire ride did I even communicate with her beyond the fact that I was going to the 12th floor. So uh, you um, and, and Nola Day released a joint complaint. And here's, I just wanted to part of it said. Uh, so she helped him onto the elevator and asked him what floor he was going to and still did all this bullshit. You see, this is why, brothers, we can't be so trusting of anybody, not just so-called white people, just of anybody. So you have to understand, everybody has been subjected to the same negative, piss-poor propaganda of the so-called black man and of the African man. You have to understand that. So when you're in these different dynamics, you really got to peep the game. You really got to be on your toes. You got to be tireless. You got to be deft. And you got to have finesse. You can't fall for that okie doke. This is why this guy is sitting up here looking so hurt. And the police on the black screen. Same, same as the, uh, the African girl from the previous video that said uh, she's, you know, she's going to school for her ancestors. She said that silly shit. This guy is not supposed to look sad. He's supposed to be up here laughing like, man, I knew y'all was racist. I, I knew it. I knew y'all was racist. That's supposed to be the mindset. Because he is lost in any, in any part of HGS and the wider Yale campus is an act of violence. Just because a Yale student is lost does not make that individual an intruder. Sending four policemen to the common room in my residence. See how hurt he is? He's so hurt, of the, he's so hurt by this that he calls it an act of violence. This guy is going to Yale. This is guy is supposed to be have such a high cognitive function. You know what I'm saying? He's so academically gifted and smart. And this is the type of nonsense he's saying. He's still a smart man. Don't get it twisted. But you can tell just from reading this that uh, he, he, he lacks the king mentality. Having the police called on you is not an act of violence, okay? You can call it an act of racism, sure. You can call it an act of uh, ignorance. Why not? But an act of violence, you're going too far. You're hurt. It's okay. Because a black Yale student is lost is an act of violence because of the history of, the st of state sanctioned executions uh, of faultless black men, women, and children. She called it an act of violence. Do you see it that way? It is definitely an act of violence, not just simply racial profiling, but it sends a message to many black students who experience these microaggressions all the time. That what Sarah told me, you don't belong here. Mm -hmm. How'd that make you feel? This is the place I call home. I now, wait a minute now. Hold on. Now, brother, you went to Yale, so I got, a, I got a level of respect for you as far as your work ethic. But what you're saying doesn't make sense. If you're saying that the average so-called black man in this country experiences all these microaggressions uh, throughout his life, throughout his day, especially in the school system, which I agree with, it's always subtle, slick racism that you have to deal with as a so-called black man or as an African man in this country. And you're saying that that means that uh, people are telling you that you don't belong here. I agree with that as well. But now this is where you lose me. You, you mention all that, you acknowledge all that, and then you say, but this is what I call home. Now, wait a minute. If, if you're somewhere and nobody up there fucks with you, nobody up there has respect for you, nobody up there wants to interact with you uh, as a man, view you as a man and take you seriously as a man, and give you your respect as a man. How can you turn around and tell me that that is your home? You see, it's, it's shit like this, it's stuff like this that makes it hard for anybody outside of so-called black, the so-called black community or the African community to take us serious. Because we will acknowledge all the BS in the system, we will acknowledge all the different discrepancies, all of the faults, all of the flaws, and then still turn around and say, but this is my home. No, it's not. If you're having to deal with microaggression every single day, you're having to deal with minute racism, little forms of racism, indirect, passive-aggressive, subliminal racism every day, then this brother's right. You don't belong there. We don't belong there. But we can't turn around and call it our home. So it's like, essentially what you're saying is, this is bullshit, but I have nowhere to go. I have nothing else to do. I, I don't plan on building my own, uh, my, own, uh, my own kingdom here. So I'm going to just keep dealing with the nonsense. That's what you're saying when you say that this is my home. I mean, I've come to Yale not just for the amazing resources, but the support that I have with just so much faculty and so much um, mm -hmm. black graduate network support that has mm -hmm. coalesced around me, and, uh, Lodari and I, excuse me, and to, to see that this can happen at any given moment. 
at Yale is problematic. But not only at Yale. But not only at Yale, uh, anywhere, all across all the high schools, all the high, all the high schools across the nation, all the middle schools and all the elementary schools. Again, everybody is subjected to the same programming. Everybody, there's no exception. Uh, this brother, you can tell he doesn't really still, he still doesn't really understand it or get that. This is why he's so shocked uh, about what happened and he actually agreed to come on CNN and talk about this. You know, I, I understood, I mean, I started to really understand the game when I was 14. So I was, I was in eighth grade. You know, I was, uh, what, one of nine students in a geometry class in eighth grade. And uh, geometry is a ninth grade class. So we were all technically, you know, very, very smart. It's only nine of us. I was the only so-called black person in that class. Now, mind you, I'm really Ghanaian. That's what I, that's what my real moniker is. I'm a I'm a Ghanaian man, okay? But I have an American accent, so everybody throws the term black on me. I don't feel like explaining myself, so I just roll with it. So I'm the only so-called black person in this class, right? Class of nine. Teacher decides uh, she wants to do Secret Santa. So fast forward, we all get each other gifts. It was this white girl that got me, right? White girl that had drawn, drawn my name from the drawing. For those of y'all that, that don't know what Secret Santa is, it's where everybody puts their name into a drawing, and then you draw somebody else's name, and you're supposed to get them a present. That's all it was. This white girl in the classroom that got me could have got me anything, okay? She could have got me anything, any present. Could have just gave me money. Do you know what this white woman got me? This girl got me a basketball. A basketball, bro. I, I will never forget that shit, man. Here I am, the only so-called black person in this class. I'm respectful. I crack a joke from time to time. Anybody in that class can talk to me. I'm, you know, I'm pleasant. I'm cool with people. And still, she can't think to give me anything else. A basketball. When it was time to give me a present, think outside the box. Okay, uh, what is he like? What is he on? What does he do? Well, he is smart, you know, he is the only black guy in his class, or so-called black guy in his class. Let me try to get him some. Nope, basketball. You get what I'm saying? This is just how they think. Everybody is subjected, is subjected to the same, uh, the same program, the same nonsense. So even at that age, I, I just, I understood. I had nothing to gain trying to go out of my way and gain favor from people of other demographics. For me to be the only so-called black person in that class, in that class... It's an advanced class, and I still get a basketball as a, as, a, as a Christmas present. It lets me know, trying to gain favor from these people is a, way, is a complete waste of time. Now, this brother, he's, a, he's at Yale, and he still seems to be struggling to get this, to get that sentiment. I mean, we saw what happened in Philadelphia. We saw the women on the golf course. We saw the women in Rialto, California for the Airbnb, and on and on and on. Um, I mean, you're, you're hitting the point, Don. I mean, we know that you, you can't drive while black in America. We see that with Philando Castillo. Mm -hmm. You can't walk around at the nighttime while black. We see that with Trayvon Martin. Mm -hmm. And now you can't nap while black? Yeah. That's my friend Lola. There's an issue that needs to be addressed and that needs to have not only just a conversation within the Yale community, but a nationwide conversation. No, 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 no. Nobody needs to talk about this. You need to talk about it. Okay. You need to talk about it to yourself. I've been figured this shit out. Okay? If the racist element in the society is so offensive to you and is so horrendous to you, then you have only one option. Either you leave America or you build your own, you form your own community within America. This is why the Mexicans can't be fucked with. This is why the so-called Asian, the different so-called Asian groups can't be fucked with. This is why the so-called the different uh, so-called Middle Eastern groups can't be fucked with. That's what the problem is. If you offend Mexico, Mexicans ain't coming on TV talking about something. We all need to sit down and have a nationwide debate or discussion over issues that are, that are only directly associated or directly affect us. Nobody's doing that. They're going to handle the issue themselves. So-called blacks need to learn how to handle the issue themselves. Us Africans, we need to learn how to handle the issue ourselves. And only then will we start to gain the respect of these other demographics and we'll, we'll be viewed as men. 
There's no need to there's no need to come on TV and talk about anything. When is the black person allowed to just be in spaces? The black person is allowed to be in spaces when the black person or the so-called black person has built that space himself and decided to put other so-called black people in that same space. That's when he can do, do whatever the fuck he wants to do. <laughs> it's that simple, man. It's that simple. But yeah, that's, that must be the end of this video. You young brothers out there, you young brothers that are, you know, in these classrooms, you're the only so-called black person in that class, you know, go back to what I said at the beginning of the video, man. You're there, you're on a mission. That's how you need to look at it. You're on a mission. Them kids, they might like you, you know, they might be cool around you, but they're never going to truly respect you. Why? It's not because they're malicious. It's not because they're assholes, but it's because they haven't been taught to. They haven't been encouraged to look at you for what you are. Uh, as a man and just judge you by what Martin Luther King was talking about, which is your character. Kids, you know, the society isn't taught to do that. It's encouraged to think associatively. Well, the mind automatically thinks associatively, but it's, it's encouraged to think, that, to think in terms of one incident or one person represents an entire demographic. If one so-called black man fucks up, they try to throw that BS on every other so-called black man in this country. One African man mess up, they try to throw that on every other African man in this country. And to be real, Africans, we're not, our culture is so uh, disregarded, <laughs> let alone respected, that they just force us to accept the moniker of black anyway. So the only finesse out of this situation, out of this conundrum, is to build your own. So you build your own and it's yours and you own it. Can't nobody tell you anything. What are they going to tell you? You include whoever you want to include. You exclude whoever you want to exclude. You do what you want. At that point, you do what you want. All right, man, I hope this video isn't too long. Uh, this is the first video you're watching on my channel. This channel is about tireless, deft finesse as it pertains to the so-called black men and us African men in this country. Why? Because we're, we're the ones at the bottom of the social hierarchy. Nobody gives a fuck about us, so we got to give a fuck about ourselves. All right, with that being said, y'all be easy, y'all be safe out there, and I'm out.